Hello everyone, welcome back. Welcome back to the part 8 of C-Sharp for Pendlesters. Today we are going to explore how to use C-Sharp to automate the process of macro and word file creation. We can uh, entirely automate the process just like that we did uh, on previous videos. I have already shown the demo for Excel macro uh, creation using Nimlang and C-Sharp. If you missed that one, please go and have a uh, check on that because we, I have explained a lot on the Excel creation. So I'm not going to do the same thing here because it's going to be a faster video. Before going deeper into this one, I would like to thank all those who subscribed and, and it, it's like a great support for me to create more videos like this. So let's go to the code and let's, let me explain a bit more about what we are going to do. Now compared to the last one, uh, on the last video of the Excel, there was a mistake that we did, especially on the macro side. Uh, nothing more. It's just on the macro. It's a minor mistake, but it it will be a demo. Uh, it will be a drawback when we are going to do it in real time. Because uh, I don't know whether you have watched the video. If you have watched it, you could have seen there was a pop up. CMD.dxc was popping up with a printing a true value uh, on the console. That was because of this uh, parameter. Uh, we were not hiding that uh, shell commands option. Actually, this uh, shell command has two parameters. One is actually what should run and second one is the status of uh, the actual uh, shell that is going to uh, display. Is We can control that whether we want to display it or whether we want to hide it. So last time we did uh, set up one for that. Actually it should have been uh, zero instead of one. Uh, there was a value for that. I think I have set it up here. Yeah, see. There is an equal enumerator here. Either you can directly pass this enumerator VB hide or you can pass the value of the enumerator zero. So it won't pop up uh, that cmd.txe. And hopefully it won't do that this time because I did uh, change that value. So let's go to the code directly. Uh, what exactly we are doing with this one. Yeah, before going deeper into this one, uh, there should be some uh, extra things that you have to do in your project. The first thing is you have to add references of these um, two uh, namespaces uh, dll that's under the core library and i already added here so it will be easy for me to show you one is for the visual basic uh, for application extensibility and the other one is for microsoft word object library last one on the excel file creation we use the, instead of word we use that excel so the difference here is uh, instead of Excel, we are using Word. So once if you added that uh, reference, one more thing is, is I mean, it's recommended, but it's not necessary. You can assign uh, some readable, more readable value here uh, instead of referring that this uh, entire path every time. So I'm assigning VB in drop and MS Word uh, that will be using in my code going forward. So uh, I don't need to refer the entire path every time. Yeah, that's it for before beginning it. So let's explore the code. I hope you can see this code. Yep. So we are creating. Uh, uh, don't mind about this one. Actually, I didn't. I think I didn't use it. I did use it only once. This is just a reflection. I mean, this is a, a not a reflection. It's a, we are creating an object. And we are assigning uh, the missing value because uh, the com object always uh, accepts uh, instead of null it uh, it accepts the missing values missing dot value every time so instead of using the missing dot value uh, repeatedly i just assign this to a variable and this variable could be used everywhere instead of the missing dot value but i think i did use only once after that i copy pasted the excel uh, here so I forgot to update this one. I think somewhere going down. I'll show you that. So, and today we uh, on last video I didn't show on the, the C sharp for uh, C sharp for pandas. I didn't show that pre text creation. But uh, here in this one I will show how to do the pre text uh, in Word file. Pretext means actually before uh, doing the actual uh, assignment of uh, retrieving or whatever attack that you are planning, you have to create. You can't send a blank document to someone and say uh, and expect error worship. You have to prepare a well-defined pretext document that should be uh, that should match with uh, the text should match with something 
uh, it should match with the scenario that you are going to do it should be something related to the target company or person who are you are uh, planning to do uh, that attack or not the attack actually in fact just sensibly have to say uh, the red team assessment so here I will be showing you how to create that pretext just like uh, the Excel one we are creating an application on the Excel I hope you remember uh, that there was an Excel work uh, application plus a work group workbook then a worksheet but here in word file there is no uh, work I mean th those kinds of concepts is just directly the application then the document so that's what we are creating here we are creating a reference to our word application then we are creating a word doc and this word doc we are assigning uh, adding that word doc uh, to the current documents of this application so this word doc will have a reference to the application uh, to the documents one of the documents that we are adding to the application here so after this part the application uh, the word app and the word doc will have an active reference so we can make use of these two to do further operations so as usual if uh, the word doc creation fails it will give you a null value so then it prints a message box it's failed and as i said here we are going to do a pretext sample but this is a, not an actual pretext i have taken this demo uh, this example from microsoft itself uh, and one more thing if you are not familiar with this one this com microsoft word and excel file creation you don't need to worry about how, because there's a already a well-defined uh, uh, doc documentation from microsoft that that will help you to create uh, your own word document or excel sheet according to your need so you just always come here and refer this one so you will you will get more clarity on how to create uh, word file with active content so I just copied uh, the paragraph one from there and here I am adding a main pa heading paragraph and a normal normal text I'm just inserting into the document uh, you, here you can see this paragraph is uh, directly an object of the application paragraph this is the application object in fact then we are adding that to our, our document so it's very straightforward in fact yeah just, i'm just adding two one is for heading and one is for normal text so after that i'm coming here i'm doing the registry changes these registry changes i already explained in the excel sheet excel file creation so please refer that for more clarity the only difference here compared to the excel one is here we are taking that word version and the word security part there it was excel version and the excel security part and we are setting these two values uh, to enable us to do the uh, macro uh, adding to our document so here we are creating the VB module and we are adding that module to our document and we are adding naming the uh, macros as our macro and here is the core part compared to that previous one and one more difference is uh, here on document it's the main method is called auto open last time i was i used auto underscore open and it was working perfectly on uh, excel but here it was not working so i did a basic search and came to know that auto open is the one that we can make use of in a uh, word file so it will get uh, executed when the uh, user is going to enable the macro so it will be that this code will be running without any user interaction and the other change here is as i explained in the beginning uh, is going to be zero zero means we be hide we are going to hide uh, we are going to hide uh, the window the shell window so the cmd.tx is not going to pop up so that will be more stealthier than the previous one so this one again i have already explained how, how it works and what we are doing inside this one and if you didn't see that please go and watch the previous video you'll get more clarity but just as a brief one it's just a powershell that's loading into this victim machine and it will be running in memory that will help us to get a reversal so after the creating the vb module we are creating we are adding that vb module to our uh, code uh, we, are, we are adding the code module and we are adding it from a string and this is our shell uh, this is our actual actual macro reversal code 
that we are adding to our macro so after that we are just saving that uh, file and here again when we are coming to save file I uh, hope you remember that we did uh, save the excel sheet on the excel 97 2003 format there was a reason for that just like that here also we had to do the same thing because if you're going to save it as a dot x dot x file it won't the macro won't work there uh, for the new versions uh, macro version has an extension of dot doc m and when i tried to test using the doc m uh, the defender was blocking me before executing the actual code so i just moved back to that 97 um, if you want to get a help on this one just press f, uh, f1 from the solution you will come to know what exactly this one this one says f for microsoft word format and actually i it didn't give enough clarity on that so i go to another site better solutions.com there it explains what exactly this one is it's a microsoft word document do doc uh, document not a docx so uh, we don't have any other values to specify here so i'm just passing missing dot value uh, instead of the null values because it's a uh, com references then on the exception as usual we are catching uh, and we are just reverting the uh, just setting it up a dereferencing path like if uh, after the operation i mean if inside suppose if something happens here while saving this uh, we have to uh, release that actual word file a word application here why because uh, here we have set it up uh, when we opened uh, the file we, we are not uh, displaying this uh, to the user the word actual word application so it will be behind the scene so if there is any exception of course we have to close that properly uh, this was another challenge when I, when I was doing uh, c -sharp for using the excel file this com component was not working well with the excel components but surprisingly the, it worked well with the word file and everything was removing perfectly and there was no problem while repeat uh, while i was trying to repeat the application continuously now um, hope you remember last video when i was trying to repeat that uh, application there was an error that was uh, showing here in this line it it was not allowing me to add that uh, vb component module uh, when, I, when i'm when i was trying to do it second time but here and, and surprisingly that didn't happen on nimland that is a, again a surprise so i think it's a problem of the CLR. clr was not able to release the log from the com components that we were using at that excel uh, when we were using the excel but for this it was working perfectly on the final block again we are doing just uh, setting it back to the previous value uh, to just make that uh, what to say that security back as usual as a normal one the one that we changed here before saving it was here so we are setting it back to make it the security stronger again then as uh, usual actually this one is a kind of repetition uh, because anyway when there is an exception or not the finally block will get executed so you don't need to do it here and here but just because of the it's a com component it's a node uh, from my perspective i didn't i didn't feel it work well with uh, uh, well every time because in excel especially it was not working well uh, that's the reason uh, i put it here and here uh, exception and here and most of the examples from the internet i referenced uh, they were using it on exception and finally but logically you didn't only one place because finally it will get executed anyway even if even if there's an exception or not this block will get executed yeah that's it we are just uh, dereferencing everything from here and we are just calling the uh, garbage collection uh, so the clr will uh, do the action it will uh, dereference every, every null objects once if it's not using it uh, anymore so that's it from the coding side so let us explore ah, one more thing here uh, before running this uh, actual uh, opening this uh, before opening here and for testing before opening this you have to ensure this server is up and running because I'm sharing uh, this be a partial reversal file on my CNC server 
and here if you check it I'm just sharing it over port 443 but it's HTTP and I'm using uh, inside this uh, PowerShell virtual I'm using another port to connect back to my CNC server because I'm using same server for sharing and reversal so let's go back and set up our sharing server and CNC so I'm going to use the same uh, stuff here uh, this ex uh, again about this application I have explained it what exactly this application is this is nothing but a golang application I have developed just to share your folder over HTTP it has different options once uh, if it's you're running is without any option it will be sharing your folder uh, on port number 480 uh, sorry uh, port number 80 and if you are no specific if you want to specify on a specific port you can just say on the command line dot serve it space the port number so it will listen on that port and share this folder over http and this file has the actual uh, stuff that will be that will be holding our reversal I'll show you this one yeah this is going to connect back uh, to this server here I'm using as I said already I'm using this uh, same server as my file sharing server and uh, reversal CNC server so once if you if I start sharing it I'll just start uh, I just started so it will be accessible to other machine on the same network now so here i have to start my server it's a reversal server actually this is a file sharing stuff and this is a reversal so this is running here now now our server setup is up and ready so we are waiting for the victim uh, we create we are going to create an uh, word file that and we are going to send it to someone and let them open the file and see what happens when they open it okay now I'm going to run this application if everything goes well I think it will be running fine yeah this application let it be here so macro test Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, it created word file with macro created. So, no, uh, I have saved this application uh, here. I'm just taking this uh, at the time of saving. See, the path is current path of the application directory, then an extension from the text box, uh, adding an extension to the text box value that we are creating. So it should be there on the same application folder. So I'm just going to open containing folder, macro test. See this file is already created here. So if everything goes well, it's going, we are going to get a reversal without popping that uh, cmd.txt just like last time. So I have my server running here and I'm going to see I got the connection and it didn't ask for that um, enable macro option because I have already uh, enabled the macro for this kind of document here so it won't ask me again I already got the shell so nothing blocked me here and if you check here uh, there will be protection on when you setting the real time protection is always on but I always turn the cloud and cloud delivered and auto sample submission off I don't want to do that because I'm doing a lot of experiments I don't want to do that automatically taking my data to somewhere so the real-time protection is on but at the same time we got the shell and this was a pretext that I was uh, telling when I was doing the code uh, when I was showing you the code this was the heading and this was the sample text we can add whatever, whatever here is according to the scenario or attack scenario you know, that you are planning or the team assessment that you are dealing with like it should be uh, it should be something some text that should match with that target company or the person that you are targeting and here 
as I said, it, it was not uh, popping up the cmd.exe. But definitely, if you have an effective ADR system, then it will show you the Excel process here. Here, word macro. Why not? Not the word macro. The word file, actual word file, see here. You can see a PowerShell, uh, the word file inside, uh, the child, if you check the child process of this word file, you can see a command prompt and uh, a macro, enable word file, and a Windows PowerShell. So the child parent relationship, from the child parent relationship, you can see, you can find that uh, there's something fishy is going on or some malicious activity is going behind this word file. So you can take action on that. And it will be more clear, clear if you are using Process Hacker or Process Explorer. Uh, what is Process Hacker? And the other one comes with this internals. Uh, I forgot the name. Yeah, yeah, you can make use of those tools to uh, check more details about this kind of stuff. Yeah, I think I have covered everything what I have planned for this video. Let me check my presentation today. Yeah, these were the two libraries, the comb libraries we were referencing in our uh, project. Uh, it was same kind of stuff that we did for the last one. The major difference is here we are using the word object library instead of the Excel one that we did when we are using Excel automation. And these were the registry values and I have explained a bit more on what exactly this is doing. So you just please refer to the previous videos if you don't have any idea or you can just uh, try to uh, do uh, research on this one yourself and try to learn what Excel this is doing. And once again, thank you all for your support. Uh, it was really a great encouraging stuff that, that helps me to create more videos like this. Uh, one more happy news to share is I'm on the edge of uh, finishing up the AV, AV Buster API conversion. So once that is done, all these stuff that I'm showing here with that Nimlang and C Sharp and uh, whatever, plus some Golang stuff will be completely automated. So you don't need to worry about anything. You just uh, say whatever you want using the API function. You, you will get uh, get it back in the form of uh, Word file with embedded macro or Excel file with embedded macro. You can create XML file that will work with MS build uh, by MS Middle Microsoft sign, sign binary, or you can may create batch file that will help you to run the install.exe and on the target, or again, some whatever all the uh, videos that on my previous videos or going forward videos will be there on every buster, it will be completely automated and everything will be like an IPA. I'm planning to host it somewhere, but it may take some time. But before that, I will uh, publish the code so someone can make use of it as an API. I don't know whether some other service is doing that as an API service. Uh, it will be a first time, I think, um, the kind of uh, stuff that will help you to create uh, undetectable uh, binaries to test your AVs or ADRs. So subscribe and stay tuned for more coding adventures. Um, till then, it's a bye from me. We'll meet with our, our next video, probably on Nimlang. I will try to uh, uh, replicate the same thing using Nimlang because I'm learning Nimlang. So I'm on, on the way of learning new stuff in Nimlang. So till then, stay tuned. I say bye from Alphas.